Welcome back to Sleepless Run in Place. And today, we're going to continue with part two of the Technical Readout 3060 rankings. Today, we'll be doing the Clan mechs. I do believe that there are a total of 26 of them. So we have 26 mechs to go through, and we're going to try to make it a little bit faster than the hour and 15 minutes my last video took. So, with that said, let's jump right in and not waste any time. Oh, no, we did waste some time. We have to cover the list, of course. We've got our five ranking categories, as per usual, but they're a little bit different than the IS ones. We have our superior category, because we always like superior mechs. We have the amazing category. These are mechs that are ex they're excellent. They're really above and beyond the average. We have our baseline. This is your average level that a clan mech should probably be at. Below that, we have the IS equivalent line. That This is a mech that the Inner Sphere itself could pretty much produce, and there's not going to be a lot of difference between the two of them. And then we have worse than IS. It's really sad if any mech falls in that category because, in general, clan equipment should just be better. But we might see one or two fall in there. I hope not, but we could. I know that at least there's one mech that I'm pretty much see is just an IS equivalent, and you're like, why was this even made? It's terrible. But we'll get to that one in a little bit. First up, now I've covered the five rankings, let's jump right on in with the very first mech, a little 20 tonner called the Snow Fox. It's a quad. We're starting with a quad right off the bat. That's pretty cool. So what has the thing got? Well, it's actually got above average armor for a quad because it, or for a, for a 20 ton mech because it's a quad. So it's got more armor on the legs and stuff like that. And it has maximum armor, 77 points, which is all you can get on a quad at 20 tons. But still, that's pretty cool. It, what does it have for weaponry? Uh, ER medium, 2 ER smalls, and that's it. Okay. It's a little bit undergunned, but it has only 10 single heat sinks, so it's not overheating any. And the thing can move 8, 12, with mask going to 16, so... Ah, I kind of like it. Um, interestingly, it looks like it should be a scout mech. But it has no scout tech equipment on it, at least not the base version. It has no Beagle Active Probe, or no Guardian ECM. Uh, nothing that's actually helping it to actually scout out there, so... Eh, it's a little bit weird. It's, um, I, I guess it'd probably make it much better as a, like, a flanking unit to come in on the sides or from behind and cause harassment that way. So, more of a frontline combatter, actually, which is a bit strange for a little 20-ton mech. Still, I don't think it's a bad mech. I'm going to actually say that this one is probably going to fall in the amazing category for a 20-tonner. Let's, let's qualify that. It's an amazing 20-tonner. Still, if you're going to buy a 20-ton mech... Why not this one? Next up, the Commando 2C. Now, we're going to have a lot of 2C variants in this that are weird, in my opinion. Like, some of them I was like, just going like, why do you have a 2C of this? Whatever. So, welcome to the Commando 2C. It's a 25-tonner that has 6-9 uh, movement speed, so, yeah, it's the Commando speed. It's not bad at all. Only has 72 points of armor. So it's a little bit under-armored. I mean, it could definitely use more armor in arms, legs, and so forth, and even torsos could use more. So it is under-armored. It is using endo-steel, but it's oddly enough not using ferro-fibrous. This is a clan mech. Why not slap them both on there? Ferro-fibrous would mean this thing would probably be maximum armor. It's got 10 double heat sinks, thank goodness, and a lot of weapons, actually. A lot of weapons. In fact, I'm going to say that this may be a mech that is under-ammoed. It's a bit weird. So we got two ER medium lasers. Okay, that's half of our heat generation already. But they're clan media, ER mediums, so they're good damage, and they got the same range as an industrial large laser. In fact, they're almost an industrial large laser for a quarter of the weight. That's how crazy clan ERs are. What do we have on top of that? Well, we got a six rack with a ton of ammo. Okay, that's great. Remember, clan missile launchers, all the base variants weigh half the same amount as an industrial one. So this has got a six rack weighing only a ton and a half. That's pretty amazing with a ton of ammo. The issue is the fact that it has three, three SRM-4 racks with only one ton of ammo. That means you're only getting really eight shots off per, per game with this thing if you're using all three of those racks. Now, if you fire all these weapons at once and you move, you are going to generate a little bit of overheat, I do believe. Like, not very much, but just a little bit. So that is something to consider that maybe you should be laying off one of those SRM-4 racks and have it as a backup. Fire two of those in the six rack every turn, run nice on heat, and get yourself to at least 12 rounds of firing. So 
in my opinion, this thing either has, you know, needs the armor from an, from Feral Fibrous, or it could take the armor from that extraneous 3rd SRM 4 rack and get another ton of armor on the thing. Either which way, I think the 3 SRM 4 racks is a bad call, but still not bad. This thing's offensive output is kind of crazy, it's just fragile. Which, for a clanner, is pretty much the, very much the definition of baseline. So the Commando 2C is right there in the baseline for our mechs. Next up is the Ice Storm. This mech is awful. It's really high speed. I mean, it's a 25 tonner that moves 1218. Okay? Remember, the Arctic Fox earlier could also move up to 18 speed, or Snow Fox, not the Arctic Fox, sorry, Snow Fox. Could also move 8, or could almost move 18. It can move 16 when using Mask. Now, the difference is the Snow Fox does that with Mask and a standard engine. That's 7 tons. The Ice Storm, with a 300XL engine, weighs 9.5 tons to achieve that goal. That's awful, actually. It's paying more tonnage for slightly more speed, and it, this thing is bad. I mean, let me continue on this. So it moves 1218. Yay, high speed. It needs that high speed because this thing only has 56 points of armor. This thing is as armored as a inner sphere stinger. And the worst part is, it's equipped like an inner sphere, well, actually, inner sphere wasp. What does it have? An ER medium laser and an SRM 2. A basic SRM 2. That means this thing has a launcher that weighs half a ton and a ton of ammo for it. Oh, that's just awful. That is terrible. I mean, truly abysmal. And what does it have also? Tag. Not a beagle active probe even. It's got tag. Tag in the clans. Again, yes, I know the clan has artillery mechs and the clan has artillery vehicles using Arrow 4, but it feels uh, not so great. I mean, this is, this is a mech the Inner Sphere can build. I mean, and it wouldn't even be all that much different. I mean, this is this is Inner Sphere equivalent. I'd almost say it's worse than Inner Sphere because the Inner Sphere is probably smart enough to run a smaller engine with mask. I hate to say it. This thing is a bad design in like every aspect nearly. I mean, no, nah, I'm gonna leave it as an IS equivalent because it really is. The numbers are Inner Sphere equivalents. But it's just bad though. It's really bad. I am really tempted to drop this down to worse than Inner Sphere. I, but that speed is the only thing that keeps in the inner sphere equivalent because, yeah, that's that's an embarrassingly bad mech for the clans. We're going to switch over to a mech that is kind of insane instead. So we're going to go to the first 30 tonner in the book, the Mandrill. The Mandrill is crazy. It's slow for a 30 tonner. It's only a 464. And we've seen things like that in the inner sphere where you have like a support uh, lightweight mech that only moves at 4.6 or 5.8 or whatever. It kind of, you know, keeps its speed down in order to mount extra weapons. So what does this thing mount for weapons? Well, it has two LRM-20 racks. With two tons of ammo per rack. Yeah, okay. This thing is an archer, essentially, without the laser equivalents. That weighs... More than it weighs less than 50% of an archer, and it's like an archer. I mean, it's 96 points. Yeah, it's not durable, it's not as durable as an archer because it freaking weighs 30 tons. Still, it's got 96 points of armor and two LRM20s. Oh, and one ER small laser, just 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 as an added bonus, it does have an ER small laser. So, yeah, no, this is <laughs> this is a mech that can go almost toe to toe with an archer and weighs less than half of what an archer weighs, so it's an insane little mech. I just wish it didn't look so freaking ugly. I mean, yeah, the mandrel lives up to its name and appearances, but do we really have to be making totem mechs like that? That's just ugly, but amazing at the same time. I mean, I'm almost tempted to throw this thing in the superior category, but the speed does make it a little bit vulnerable, so it's only going to drop into the amazing. Still... You put two of those out there for an equivalent tonnage to an archer nearly, and you're going to probably win that battle. It's insane. That's that's crazy little mech. Just a little bit, um, yeah, could use a little bit more armor maybe. And yeah, there we go. Still, it's pretty cool. Next up, we have another relatively ugly mech. I don't know what's up with the design on this one, why it looks so ugly. 
mainly the head. But really, the head is what just makes this thing ugly. Well, and the upper arms. The upper arms are like massive, and the lower arms are all spindly, Tyrannosaurus like. It's it's blah. Yeah. Anyways, we're coming up to the Pack Hunter. The Pack Hunter is a wolf in exile mech. Yay, weird time period. Yada yada. But it's uh, it's got a 210 engine, no XL. So it goes 7117, because this is another 30 tonner. It's really light on the armor. I mean, this thing is embarrassingly light on the armor. It's one of those mechs that it better win the offensive battle because its defensive capabilities are, good God, it's going to die. It's got 64 points of armor on a 30 tonner mech. And this thing barely has armor equivalent to the internal. I mean, 8 points of armor on a 7 point internal leg. This thing is low armor, really low armor. It means a Gauss rifle takes a leg off of it. You just get a lucky hit. Goodbye, leg. Goodbye, pack hunter at that point in time, too. So what does it have for a weapon? An ERPPC. One clan ERPPC. Thank goodness it has double heat sinks. So it just overheats a little bit if it jumps the full seven and fires the ERPPC. Still, one clan ERPPC. It's got good range, so you can stay at distance, and you can, you can stay at distance, you can snipe, and you can move being hard to hit. That's how you're going to survive with this mech. You can, and if you do run these things in packs, you can kind of like circle the enemy, kind of keep them at bay, don't want to get too close, kind of be harassing from different angles with this long range fire. Because this thing, if it gets close or gets a bad movement modifier, it's gone. Th that's the end of its day. So, yeah. Eh, it's, a, it's a bit rough one. Again, I think this is pretty much a definition of a baseline clan mech. All offense, low defense. The speed keeps it up there, but a lucky hit, I mean... 10s, 11s, and 12s are doable. They got, you got chances of hitting those. And the day one of those with a big gun like an LB-10 or, ER or a large laser or a PPC basically hits this thing, and it's going to be rolling on the critical chart, maybe even losing sections. Just one big gun shot, luckily hitting this thing, could end its day. Could be a very unhappy day for it. So, baseline. Next up, we come to another 2C mech. That's one of those ones that I kind of wonder why... We bothered making it. What would, what would possess the clans to think that this was a design worth emulating? I mean, according to the, the, the fluff, it was kind of being a stepping stone towards Clan Coyote developing the Omnimech, but still, I don't know why you'd bother working with this thing as a stepping stone to the Omnimech. What mech am I berating without saying the name of it? Well, I'm berating the Urban Mech 2C. Yeah, it's another trash can. Technically, I think this is better than the Intersphere Urban Mech because it's faster by 50%. It's not a 232, it's a 353. It has 96 points of armor, so it's a little bit under armored again. Not by a huge amount, but a little bit under armored. Thankfully, unlike the Intersphere version, this thing mounts an Ultra 10 with two tons of ammo. Ultra 10s reach out a significantly good distance. And can pop for 10 damage. Or if you get lucky and you roll 8 or better on the cluster chart, 20 damage in two locations of 10. And it has an ER small. It's a better mech than the urban mech, but my god, it's not a good mech in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's an IS equivalent because it really is just a copy of an IS mech with slightly modified changes. And it's not worse than the Nears Hero 1, thank goodness, but it's not anything better than an IS equivalent. God, I still don't like this mech. Hey, let's switch gears, though, and go straight to our first Omni-Mech of the book, the Cougar. This is a, a Jade Falcon mech. Yay, Falcons! It's not a bad little Omni-Mech. It only weighs in at 35 tons, though, so it is a light. And it's got armor that's almost... It's under maximum armor again. I mean, this thing's got, like... But it's not a huge amount under maximum. It's got to be between 80 and 90%. It's got 5.8 speed, so it's a bit on the slow side again. That's a bit rough for a 35 tonner to be slow. Built in 10 double heat sinks. And uh, it runs both ferrofibrous and endosteel. So we got the uh, technologies in there XL, ferrofibrous, endosteel. So it's got the good stuff on there. Good Omnimech technologies. So let's look at what the loadouts are. Well, we got the first loadout, the primary one, which has two large pulse lasers and two LRM 10s. Honestly, the weapons aren't bad. The problem is it can't handle the heat because it has no. It didn't add any space for extra heat sinks. And those two large pulse lasers are going to consume all the heat sinks you can. So, and why are you going to fire the the uh, 
LRMs over the large pulses. Because remember, clan large pulses reach 20 hexes. The LRMs reach 21 hexes. The large pulses do 10 damage at a minus 2 to hit. The LRMs are... I don't know why the LRMs are on this mech, honestly. I would have put... I don't know why I'd have put extra heat, like two extra heat sinks and maybe one tin rat. I don't, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know why they're on there. They are seem really extraneous to what its primary mission is, which is to put large laser pulses in people's faces. So let's switch over to the, the uh, Alpha variant, or the A variant, which mounts two LRM-20s, two ER mediums. Oh, and the LRM-20s have uh, Artemis IV. Okay, now that one I can understand is a missile mech. That can handle that heat without, if you want you don't don't move, and um, it's got 12 shots per launcher, so normal game, and the launchers actually serve a purpose like that. They're bigger guns than a than a uh, large pulse laser technically, so because average LRM damage is 12 to 16 is what you usually see out of a 20 rack on this one because the Artemis 4 you're looking more at the 16 range, so good damage weapon at the distance. And it's got enough to fire through the game. And they've got the ER medium just uh, weapons that are still going to 15 hexes, which is really solid. So the A variant is very good. Oh, it has a small pulse laser in the head just as bonus. I, I honestly would have ripped that small pulse out and put in a heat sink just so I could move better with the heat generation on this thing. Alt config B. ER medium, ER PPC, ER PPC. It has six extra double heat sinks, so that does give it a dissipation of 32 which is enough to fire both the air PPCs and move. So, yeah, we've got like a... Not, that's not terrible. It's like, a, it's like a, a Puma that doesn't stink. You know, because the basic Puma is overheats like a monster because it doesn't have the heat sinks to handle the two air PPCs. So, and, but this is not a targeting computer. So take it or leave it. But I think this is a better beta. This, this B variant is a pretty solid variant because it can at least handle the air PPCs while moving. So that's pretty good. Alt config C. We have five ER medium lasers and a Gauss rifle. Okay, I don't mind that pairing at all, but that's too many ER medium lasers. Four ER mediums with an extra double heat sink and the Gauss rifle would have been the sweet spot for heat generation and weapons fire. Why you would go that one extra ER medium over a heat sink, I don't understand. Because all, all it's going to cost you is, in the long run, laying off of it, or two of them, in order to compensate for the heat you're building up. So, uh, it, that design is kind of stupid because it just misses the ballpark of like what this Omnimech should be doing, which is engaging at range and keeping up a minimal a, a minimal speed to so get some defensive modifier. Because this, this is mech. This is, a, this is a sniper mech. Next up, I kind of like this next rate. The Alt Config D has got an ER Large Laser and an Ultra 10, which kind of... Yeah, the ER Large reaches 25 hexes. It's an insanely long-range gun. But it has an Ultra 10. So we're looking at two guns that can do 10 damage or three hits of 10. And it's backed up by two SRM-4s. The SRM-4s seem really extraneous to me. But the ER Large and the AC-10 at least combine well enough that you're not going to overgenerate. You're not going to cost too much on heat while you're firing and moving. So I like that variant enough. And it is enough of a scary threat. But I don't think it holds a candle to the alt configuration B. Because the alt configuration B is running those clan ER PPCs, which reach 23 hexes, and do 15 points per shell, which is really good. So, best variants are A, B, and D, with C being really close, but dumb. And then, primary having like 7 tons of wasted stuff on it that doesn't make any sense. So, you know, every variant seems to have a pretty darn good use on this thing. This is a pretty solid little mech. I'm going to say that this qualifies as an amazing Omni-Mech as long as you're using it right. Sniping at distance and not closing with the enemy because that's where you're going to regret it. And watch your heat levels on a few of the variants. Next up, the Arctic Wolf. I know earlier I said the Arctic Fox I meant, and I spent the Snow Fox. But this actually is the Arctic Wolf. This is a mech that does one thing and does one thing insanely. It's a 40-tonner, so it's our first medium. And it moves 7-11. It only has 10 double heat sinks, which is going to be an issue for it because it is way overgunned. Only 96 points of armor, so it's less armor than the Cougar, which is another issue for it. It's also kind of a glass cannon. This is a mech that only has the same amount of armor on the extra outside of the leg as the inside of a leg. So, bad news, Barry, right there. What does the thing have for guns, though? My goodness. 
It has six SRM-6 launchers, two SRM-4 launchers, and a NARC missile beacon. Holy good grief. I mean, cha, well, you don't... <sighs> one thing, and one thing insanely. It can't handle the heat off those weapons, for one thing. I mean, that is just a crazy amount of heat off this stupid thing. It is, it is bonkers in some ways. I, I mean, truly a bonkers mech. This thing generates 32 points of heat on missile firing, plus two more for moving, and it only has 10 doubles. I mean, drop out some of those six racks. I mean, drop out two of those six racks and strap in three double heat sinks at least. I mean, seriously, there's no reason this mech is this overgunned. And that underdefended. I mean, if it didn't have the 711 zero movement mode profile, this thing would be really awful. I, this is not an IS equivalent mech, it's a baseline mech, even though it feels pretty bad, because it still outputs an insane amount of damage. I, and it's very clan-like, it's, it's all offense, no defense again. I mean, movement is your best defense on this thing, but again, a lucky shot and it's going to be regretting its days. Also, I mean, thankfully it only has 5 tons of ammo overall, 1 an SRM 4 ton, 1 NARC ton, and 3 6 rack tons. But still, I mean, it's... It seems crazy. It, it seems like a badly designed piece of crazy. Not a huge fan of it. Next up, we come to another 2C mech. We come to the Clint 2C. I forgot that Clint's were actually SLDF era mechs for a little while. Uh, they always just, to me, see, seemed like a Capellan design. But they were an SLDF mech, and apparently they were uh, taken over to the Pentagon worlds or wherever, or the clan home worlds. And, uh, apparently, Clan Snow Raven decided to make a 2C design out of it. Go, Clan Snow Raven! Woo! I mean, you don't hear about them a lot, and they're actually kind of a cool clan. Until, of course, you end up with, like, the Raven Alliance later on, or, yeah, so. Yeah, but still, I mean, it's a strange mech, the Clint 2C, because it really is just a Clint. The, the biggest addition this thing has over the normal Clint is the ability to jump and have more armor. Aside from that, it's a Clint. I mean, what does the Clint have? The basic, the most basic Clint. It's got, like, low armor, like, some dinky amount, like, something stupid, like, four or five tons. I'm not, I'm not off the top of my head, I can't remember. So it's a pretty low number of armor uh, on a, um, on a, uh, 40 tonner. Then we've got the, uh, it's got an AC-10 and a medium laser. What does this thing have, the Clint 2C? Well, it's got more armor. It's got uh, seven tons of armor, so it's definitely got more armor. But it's not even ferrofibrous armor. It's just armor. It's got Intersteel and an XL, so yay for that. Um, it moves 6-9, and it adds a 6. The basic Clint doesn't jump. This one does jump, yay. And uh, what does it have, though? An LB-10X with way too much ammo. Four tons of ammo. Four. Four tons of ammo. Which, uh... Yeah, that's crazy. Two tons of slug, two tons of cluster. You're never going to go through the game. It could have dropped out two of those tons of ammo for something else. And two ear medium lasers, so twice the medium lasers of a Clint. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I hate to say it, but this Clint 2C is just an IS equivalent. I mean, if the uh, Clint in the Intersphere gets an XL engine, it can easily add in another medium laser. So, whoop de doop de doo This one is not special in any way, shape, or form, really. It's just an IS equivalent. Slapping a 2C on it and making small tweaks. It's really nothing special about that thing at all. Next up, the Corvus. The Corvus is... It's a slow Clint. I, I'm serious. It's a slow Clint. That's what this thing really is. And that's what's awful about it. It, it moves a 464... It does have better armor because it's running ferrofibrous and end of steel. So it has more armor than the Clint 2C. But what does it mount? It mounts an Ultra AC-10 and two medium pulse lasers instead of two ER mediums. It's just a Clint. It looks different, but it's just a Clint. That's slow. I, this is a mech, again, that other than the range problems that the Intersphere has with its medium pulses... It could build this without even 
troubling itself. I mean, the thing doesn't even mount an XL engine. This is no better. It's it's a equivalent to an IS mech. It's there are some designs in this book that, as, as that looking from the clan perspective, are pretty. Wow, you did that? Why? I mean, sad. This is nothing special though at all to this mech. Next up, let's jump into the first 45 tonner, the Great Worm. I like the name of it. The image doesn't look terrible either. But its weaponry is weird. It has less armor than the Corvus, so we're back down to the same armor that Clint had. <sighs> no ferrofibrous again. No window steel and no XL engine. That's what this thing has as an issue. This is a cheapy garrison mech for the clans. It's um, not super hot. It's... Weaponry also leaves something to desire. I mean, I use these, but I use these to be silly, essentially. I, I like to throw them at opponents when I'm playing, like, a, as a game master, I'm playing as the bad, uh, the bad guys. I like to throw these down because, like, they're not super tough, but they still fill in a clan slot in one of my, land, in one of my stars. So what does this thing carry? Two Ultra AC-2s! With enough ammo for 11 rounds of firing. So that's enough ammo. One ton, in other words. It has an LRM-10 rack with one ton of ammo. Perfect mount. Then it has two ER mediums and two ER smalls. It, it can it can handle its heat so long as you don't fire the ER smalls, more or less, so yay. And it does have two extremely long-range weapons. I mean, those those Ultra AC-2s do reach out and tickle to a pretty good darn distance, but they're they're Ultra AC-2s. They are just silly guns that you're... Blink, 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 blink. Thankful for the clans, only weigh 5 tons per Ultra 2, and not 6 tons for an AC-2, but still, it's not a good gun. It's a silly mech, and it's... So, nothing special, nothing super amazing. Not even, honestly, a baseline mech, in my opinion, because it's, it's just weird. At least it moves at 5.8. Now to the Wyvern 2C. I un don't, the, the artwork for this mech is one of those artworks I stare at and go, what am I looking at? Why does its back resemble an HVAC system? Like, I mean, literally, you could plug this thing into the, like, does it plug into buildings to help cool them or something like that? I don't get that back. That back looks weird. The head looks pretty cool. But then as we scan down the image a bit farther, we find the crotch flamer and the crotch LRM-10 rack. Uh, I, mm, we did not need a fiery penis on the front of this thing. I'm sorry, we really didn't. And then the... Um, the The, cro the cod piece with an LRM-10 in it is just excessive. I, I I don't honestly know why we did those. They are both located in... Or, they're both located in the center torso, but in the center torso doesn't mean crotch. It doesn't have to mean crotch. Okay, nonetheless. Let's look at this thing has good for, for this thing is overall. It's a 45 tonner. With 152 points of armor, so pretty solid armor. It only moves at 464, so it is slow. But that's how the basic Wyvern was also slow as well. Uh, it mounts into steel, thankfully, so it saves some tonnage there. And it has 12 double heat sinks, so I can approve of the double mount, at least being somewhat useful. It has an ER large laser, with two ER smalls and two ER mediums, a flamer, two machine guns, an LRM-10, and an SRM-6. Again, like the basic Wyvern, this thing kind of just covers... All the bases. It's a very utilitarian, middle ground. I can do a little bit of everything, but nothing spectacularly mech. Which honestly makes it a really good garrison mech. This is the kind of mech you'd want to have in a Solama unit that's actually holding locations and sitting back and defending, essentially. This is a really good mech for that design. So, I like it a lot. I mean, honestly, I think the Wyvern 2C is a pretty darn good mech overall. I'm not sure it qualifies as amazing, but it is definitely a baseline mech for just overall the full utility of the thing. 
I and I and I I like that. I like a mech that's good and useful and utilitarian. And that's what the Wyvern 2C is. Obviously, it can't fire everything at once with overheating, but it's got those bracketable weapons. It's got your short range blob and your long range blob. Use one or the other. It's good. I'm gonna put it in baseline because I think it is a very baseline mech. It is really good baseline. I mean, like this is like kind of like solid core of your force baseline mech you'd kind of want. Next up, the Stalking Spider. Two quad to the clans in one book? Oh. Nah. It's a 50 tonner. Moves 585 with mask for 10. It's only got 154 points of armor, so it's a little bit under armored because it's a quad, so it could have had more armor. So, but still, it, it can take an AC-20 shell to the armor of every leg and still not go internal. So that's pretty good. Um, it's got 11 double heat sinks, and it's got two medium pulse lasers, two SRM-4s, and an ERPPC. That's actually pretty darn good. I mean, you can fire all your energy stuff and move for the most part without too much of an issue. Or you can fire the ERPPC and jump without any overheating. You can fire all the close range stuff, I mean and move pretty effectively. It's got some options. You really can't fire everything at once without overheating, uh, but it's not going to overheat by a significantly problematic amount. I mean, it's not terrible. Overall, it's a... For a, another second liner mech, it is really, really impressive, and I do like this one quite a bit, because I like quads. So I'm going to give it props, and this thing's going to be an amazing quad. It also really looks like his name's making. and that thing looks like a freaking... I mean, it looks more like a tarantula of the Inner Spheres tarantula looks like. So, pretty awesome. Then we come to the Ursus. The mech that says, I'm a skull. Uh, I'm a skull. I don't know why the name Bear or Ursus means I'm a skull, but it does for some reason. This mech... I... I really don't understand its artwork at all, why it looks like that with that name or, or anything. I mean... And you know the worst part is also, it doesn't even, in the fiction, it doesn't even tell me why it's named that. It's just, this is the first uh, clan ghost bear battle, battle mech designed entirely and built in the inner sphere. Yay! Still, it's, uh, let's take a look at it. It's a 50 tonner, it's got 4.6 for speed, no XL engine, no endo steel, but it does have ferro fibers armor, thankfully. It's got 163 points of armor, so it's pretty well protected. It's not maximal protection, but it's pretty close. So what have we got for guns? Well, we have 16 double heat sinks. Remember, let's think about that. Let's, let's talk about the heat. 16 double heat sinks, cooling 32 points. What's it have for weapons? An ER large laser, two medium pulse lasers, two ER medium lasers, SRM-6, LRM-10, and ECM rack. Or ECM rack. ECM suite. I mean, it's not... I mean, it's not heat efficient, but it's it's close. I mean, we're looking at 12 from the ER large, 10 from the ER medium, so we're at 22, plus the medium pulses. So we're at 30 out of its 32. So, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. The missile racks do knock it over its heat, but it's still not bad. It's the artwork on this thing that drives me nuts. There's no excuse for that artwork, in my opinion. It Giant teeth. Why? Sorry. Just again, this this really feels like a baseline clanner because it's got good offense, acceptable defense, and it's just there. And it's going to be kind of durable because it does um, not have an XL engine, and thankfully it does have an SRM six rack with a ton of ammo in the center torso, so that you are able to fight when you've lost everything else. So yay. Zombie mech in some ways. Not a great zombie, but a zombie. Also, I guess that makes sense for a skull, that it could be an undeady mech. Next up, and another, our second Omni mech. This is a Blood Spear Omni mech. It is, which is kind of weird because it's bird theme so you would tend to think that it would have been like a falcon one, but it's not. It's a Blood Spirit, so... Go figure. Uh, it's a 55 tonner. Moves 580 with 10 double heat sinks built in and 173 points of ferro fibrous armor. 
it's 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 pretty good on armor, but it's definitely lacking a little bit in the armor cap category still. I mean, it's got 13 internals on the legs, only 20 armor, so it could have put more than half, you know, almost half a ton more on each leg. So, yeah, still a bit under. But it is running ferro fibers and steel, thankfully. It doesn't have an XL engine, so making it cheaper on the rates, and that's, yeah, okay, whatever. Still, let's look at the weapon loadout. The primary configuration mounts two ER mediums, two medium pulses, and an Ultra AC-10. Okay. You don't have any extra heat sinks in there, so you're running hot. By a little bit. Oh, it also slaps in five jump jets in the A variant. So the A variant, or the primary variant, can jump. Yay. Okay. Uh, it's an okay variant. It could be better because it could have done something to add heat. Because it has 30 shots of ammo, so it could have at least taken one ton of ammo out of there to slap in an extra heat sink, which would be a little bit more helpful. Something. Okay, what's the all-config A have? Two ER PPCs with six or seven double heat sinks and five jump jets. So now we just have an adder that weighs 20 tons more without a targeting computer. Whatever. I mean, sure, the ER PPCs are good. And this way it can run and fire both of them without overheating. It can run and almost jump, or sorry, it can jump and fire both of them with only heating a little bit. So it's not bad, but it's just like that feels a little bit undergunned for a, for a cleaner of this weight class. Interestingly, though, the guns are in the torsos, leaving the arms free for punching? That's strange for a clan design. This is an Omnimech design that put the primary guns in the torsos, meaning that if you're wearing elementals, you couldn't fire them. Now, the only thing I always can see to do that is, if you really are thinking about maybe socking someone with a couple punches after you're firing your PPC at them. So, this seems like a strange clan design again. Uh, I'll config B. Uh... ER large laser and triple LRM 15s with Artemis 4. It has 32 shots of ammo, so not quite enough for three rounds or 12 rounds of complete firing, but pretty close. Um, it also seems weird. Benefit on that one is the ER large laser is stuck in the head, so that you can always have an ER large laser hanging around. Definitely a little bit heat inefficient, but this one doesn't jump, so, okay. Still feels weird for a clanner. I kind of like it, but still feels weird. And only one of the 15 racks is mounted in arm. The other is the torso. So two torso, 15 racks, and ER large laser on the head, and then, like, one arm with a 15 rack on it. Still strange. Alt config C. Uh, double ER large, double ER medium, a target computer, and seven extra double heat sinks. Oh, Okay. Oh, and also five jump jets again. I like that better than the one with the ERPPCs. Because it generates 32 points of heat, can jump, so it can fully cover its heat, and it has that target computer to make the weapons more accurate. I like the C better than the A by a long shot. Also, the ER larges do have longer range to tickle, so you've got that. Alt config D. We have an ER large, two ER mediums, an ER small. And then three heavy medium lasers. Ooh, we haven't seen those before in this book, I don't think. Yeah, we haven't. No, three heavy medium lasers. Heavy medium lasers are disgusting weapons. They really are. They have the basic interstellar range. They have a, generate a lot of heat, but they do a ton of damage. They are, they are, but they do have a penalty to hit. So there's all that trade-offs. But this thing also mounts 12 more double heat sinks because, again, like I said. Those heavy medium lasers generate a boat ton of heat. They're crazy weapons. So this thing needs that, that that 44 points of dissipation to handle its heat load. Because this thing can cook fast. I mean, it's an interesting variant. And it's our first heavy medium or heavy laser we've seen in the book so far. Heavy lasers are kind of cool because they do so much damage for a lot of heat. But they weigh, you know, it still only weighs what a medium it it only weighs what a medium laser weighs it takes up twice the critical slots of a medium laser so it's bulky and big in space wise but it is one ton for a crap ton of damage i mean heavy mediums are 10 damage for seven heat for one ton they have a plus one to hit but oh 
we are talking about a freaking one ton PPC that's only got nine hex range with no minimums for less heat. They're crazy weapons that if you've got attached to a good pilot are doomsday guns. Still, it's our first heavy weapons in the thing. The mech is, I mean, honestly, it's interesting. It's, I, I feel it's really just a baseline clanner again because it's got some issues in different places. Some of the variants seem kind of strange to me. And then there's the artwork. Is that the cockpit below the beak? And why is the far distance arm longer than the near distance arm? From perspective. If you look in the one arm, the arm under the 667, it's shorter than the arm that's further away. Uh, baseline, I'm calling baseline. Ugh. There are some mechs that you look at and you just go, wow, that's ugly. That, uh, that's just, just ugly. And the Matador is an ugly mech. I mean, it's a freaking block. This is a Minecraft mech. It looks like a mech you would see in Minecraft. It's just squares. Squares stacked on top of the squares with squares stuck on those squares. Ugh. It's our first heavy mech at 60 tons. 464. No XL, no Indo, but, <sighs> yeah, not even any ferrofibrous. It's got 192 points of armor, so not bad on the armor. It's uh, almost maximum, not quite like a point or two per location under. Still pretty good. What is it equipped with, though? Well, it's got four machine guns. A Streak 6 and a Streak 4 rack. I don't know why you wouldn't just do both the same kind. Except for one stuck in the head, and you can't fit a, fit a strict six in the head. Yet. It's got two air mediums, two small pulses, and three medium pulse lasers. Attached to only 12 double heat sinks. The problem with streaks and double heat, streaks and streaks in general, is that you can't predict your heat without overestimating. You have to always assume that your streaks are going to lock You want if you don't want to generate too much heat, which means you're laying off something else. Or you're running the risk of, oh, both my streaks locked, and uh, now I'm generating way too much heat. Still, it's a slow, close-range combat mech with a lot of machine guns, which, by the way, are the pepperoni slices on top of its shoulders. Uh, I mean, other than the fact that everything in this mech saves weight on the Inner Sphere version, the Inner Sphere version could run Indo Steel or something and be just as good. Again, this is one of those mechs that doesn't seem like it's an improvement over an Inner Sphere design. As weird as it is. So I'm saying this is an IS equivalent mech. It's just... Now we come to the Predator. Also known as AKA Cockpit Crotch. Look carefully at the picture and note the cockpit is in the crotch. This is designed before we have center torso cockpits. This thing's cockpit is in the crotch. <sighs> okay, another 60 tonner, moves 5'8, has an XL engine. That's that's nice. We got some speed. 10 double heat sinks and 184 points of armor. So it's a little bit lighter on the armor than even than the Matador was. It has two LB10 XACs, two ER mediums, and two ER small lasers. Both the LBs are paired with two tons of ammo, so or two tons of two tons of ammo each. So you can have a ton of slug and a ton of cluster per per cannon, which by the way are those gigantic Five boar monstrosities on its shoulders. They're weird. And yes, the ER small lasers are in the legs. You'll notice they're the things attached to the... Uh, like the fenders over the, the legs. I don't know what you call those on that mech. Armored skirt. Look like fenders to me. I, I, I don't know. It seems like a pretty baseline mech to me. It's got pretty good offense. Acceptable defense. Got some speed to it. It's just weird. I mean, weird drawn. I like the double LB-10X of those, so it's a, it's a baseline mech. Remember how in the Inner Sphere we actually had some superior mechs in this 3060 book? I'm not seeing them in the clan so far. I wanna, This book really is not great for the clans, in my opinion. 
Next up, the Fire Scorpion. The Fire Scorpion is a 65 ton quad. So we're looking at our third quad now. That's pretty cool. That's got a 4.6 speed, no XL engine, but has Indo Steel, thankfully. Uh, it's got a lot of armor. It's not max, but again, it's like a point per location below max, with 224 points covering this quad. What does that for guns? It has an LB 10X auto cannon and an Ultra 10X auto cannon. Each of them with 30 rounds of ammo. I mean, come on, once again, strip out a ton of each of those and slap in some ER medium lasers for some for additional weaponry. Much better designed that way. Uh, as it is, though, it's got pretty good engagement, and it kind of does look like a scorpion in some ways of the art design, but it's... It is just a baseline mech. It doesn't thrill me or wow me in any way, shape, or form. It's very ammo-dependent, but it's overly dependent upon that ammo, or over-ammo, because it has no additional lasers that it could have had if it didn't have so much excess ammo. So... Yeah. Next up, the Ha Otoko. Aha! It's Clan Diamond Shark's disguise mech to sell to the Inner Sphere. Because, I love it, they even, the, the clans are like, or Diamond Sharks obviously sell this to the Inner Sphere. Diamond Sharks like, no, 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 we won't. Here, have these mechs. Inner Sphere, Karita, you, you can you can run these. And obviously, they do. There's an Inner Sphere variant of the Hanatoko, which is literally just Inner Sphere swaps out some stuff and goes, hey, it's the same exact mech without clan tech in it on a clan frame. Let's go. Yeah. What do we got? We got a 65 tonner that moves at 460. With 13 single heat sinks. See, this is the clue right here. 13 single heat sinks. I mean, this thing can either be swapped out for some inner sphere doubles, or, I mean, come on, my, the clans aren't even doubles, and this is just dumb. 13 single heat sinks is what's going to drag this thing into the dirt. Because it's got two LRM20 racks, two LRM10 racks, and it can't handle the heat from those because it's too much heat. And it's a clan mech, so not having doubles in it is just dumb. Especially as clan doubles are only two critical slots. I mean, seriously, not doubles is dumb. But that's why the industry version goes, hey, 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 like we do. So, I mean, it would be otherwise a really good mech offensively because that's got a really good range support effect to it. And it's actually the best looking clan mech in the book, I'm, I'm, as far as I'm concerned. This thing looks pretty awesome. And uh, there's one other mech, one other clan that looks pretty good. But this one looks really cool. And... It's, it's such a funny mech. I mean, I like it. But it is... This is the funny part. It's designed specifically to be an IS equivalent mech. That's what it's designed for. And that's what it does. It hits its goal. So I can't object to that. It's just where it goes. Next up, the Guillotine 2C. Another one of our 2C mechs. And it, again, is very similar to the basic Guillotine. I mean, that's, that's what these Clan 2Cs are doing this time. Now, while it's very similar to the equivalent, that being said, though, this is actually better than the guillotine from the Inner Sphere. It carries more big guns and does more with them. Because the guillotine from the Inner Sphere just has, has like, large lasers and medium lasers and, like, an SRM rack. It's, um, it's a, it's a little bit lightly gunned, in my opinion. I mean, it's not terribly undergunned. It's a little bit lightly gunned, but it's big advantage in the Inner Sphere one is it's very heat efficient. Because it's got, like, 25 single heat sinks or something dumb like that. To cover its heat problems. So you can like walk and shoot everything. Which is great for an inner sphere mech that weighs 70 tons. The clanner cannot quite equal that. Because this thing only has 16 double heat sinks. And it mounts an ER, large, ER PPC and two large pulses. That already exceeds the 32 points of heat. Then it has two more ER mediums and a SRM6 rack. So it's a much hotter running mech than the inner sphere original design. Uh, the, the 3N or whatever that this thing came from. Uh, it's both better and worse than the industry one because the heat inefficiency, but it's got better guns. Instead of having like four medium lasers and a large laser and a six rack, this thing's got two large pulses, two ER mediums and ER PPC, and a six rack. And so it's got better overall damage output. And it's got like the exact same armor still as the industry one. I, this is, this is a baseline clan mech because it's better than the inner sphere equivalent guillotine, but still it's it's a weird up uh, it's a weird side grade in some ways because it, it adds the extra heat to give it a, a dueling weapon at distance. When you come back in close, you just fire the ear mediums and large pulses in the SRM6, and you still overheat a little bit, so it's not as inefficient as the, the inner sphere one for heat management and just in general. 
Makes it a bit strange of a dog, a bit of a an odd dog. Next up is hands down the best clan mech in the book, by far. I, maybe the only one we're going to see, and I can tell you right now, it's going to be in the superior category. It may be the only one we have up there, and that is the freaking amazing superior Nova Cat. Name for clan Nova Cat. This is their totem mech, or their 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 flagship mech, I guess. And this thing is a disturbingly good mech. It is a 70 tonner, 4.6 XL engine into steel, 11 built in double heat sinks, and 216 points of armor, putting it to maximum armor except for like a point. Things like missing like one point. Still, wow. Really, really good. Like 99.8% armor or whatever. So, what does this thing have for weaponry? Why does it make this thing so stellar? Well, the primary configuration has three-year large lasers, two-year PPCs. It's got an additional 14 double heat sinks on top of those 11. So we're looking at 50 heat dissipation. Three-year larges, two-year PPCs, and you're generating... Well, okay, sorry, no. You generate a little bit excess. Issues being that they're all on the arms because it is a proper clanner that's meant to hold elementals. Still, <laughs> Good. But that is... Yeah, that is not my favorite variant. That is not my favorite variant. Alt Config A. Four ER large lasers. A target computer. Jump jets. And... Uh, 14 more double heat sinks. So once again, 50 heat dissipation. 50 heat dissipation for four ER large lasers. Which is 48 heat. So you can run and fire all of your ear larges all day long without overheating one bit. Oh, and they're all strapped into a target computer, so you're getting minus one to hit. 25 hexes of insane laser capacity. Oh, yeah. All config B. Well, this version goes in a different route. How about six LRM-15 racks? <laughs> and, uh pair of ER medium lasers. We've got some more double heat sinks in there to help handle the heat. But there's your missile support version. 6 LRM-15s. Thump, 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 thump. <laughs> Still like the A better, but the B's pretty funny too. All config C is the garbage variant. I know. Hard for me to say. Two large pulse lasers. Okay, large pulses are fine. And extra double heat sink. Okay. Two Ultra 5s and an LB-5. Why? Why use that over Alt Config A? Alt Config C is the garbage variant. Really is. If they're all LB-5s, I could understand it. Because then you'd be, using, you'd be looking for that thing for being a crit seeker. And you're just being pop, 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 pop. But they're not. you got two Ultra 5s. I don't... Seriously, not a good variant. Okay, now let's get Alt Config D. This is a crazy variant. Alt Config D mounts LB10 XAC, and then not one, not two, but three, three heavy large lasers. Heavy large lasers have the range of an inner sphere large laser, so 5, 10, 15. They do 16 points of damage because they're insane. They also cost 18 heat. And have a plus one to hit with. Oh, and by the way, this variant ties those weapons into a targeting computer to override the plus one to hit. Well, making it even. Minus one, plus one. Still. Holy crap. The problem is, each of those lasers, like I said, they do 18. That's, that's, that, that's almost 20 heat per gun. That's almost 60 heat off those guns. It's, it's not quite it's it's 54 heat off those guns and the lb2 or the lb10 generates two points of heat so we're looking at 56 points of heat and what's the thing after heat sinks all total 20 doubles yeah you're usually laying off one of those heavy larges every turn because otherwise you just cook alive you kind of got a backup heavy large laser in case one of them goes pop and gets blown up by something gets critical hit it or whatever still it's um in a panic turn, I guess, you can go click and alpha strike and go, I'm running hot. 
And if they hit, it's like an AC 20 that's got a 15 hex range. Not quite. I mean, it's a, it's 16 damage only, but still, that's that's enough to decapitate things. And it's kind of crazy. Still, on the basis of configs primary A and B alone, this mech is superior. It also looks really cool. I mean, like, really good art on this mech, too. I mean... Next up, the Orion 2C. Of course we're going to see a 2C variant of Alexander Kerensky's freaking mech. And what does the thing have? Well, instead of the auto can you find in most Orions, it has a Gauss rifle. Although I think Kerensky's didn't Kerensky's have a Gauss rifle? I Don't quote me on that, I have to look that up again. So, Orion has a Gauss rifle. It has an LRM-20 rack. Orions have LRMs. It has an SRM-4 rack. Orions have LRMs. Or SRMs. <laughs> it has two ER large lasers. A lot of Orions have two large lasers. So, yeah, it's an Orion that's just cross-graded. Good armor. 230 points of armor. It's a 4.6 75 tonner. Uh, Indo steel, which is an advantage. I mean, it's a good mech. Do not get me wrong on this at all. Only problem is it's heat inefficient again. It's got 12 double heat sinks for 24 points of dissipation, which means that your 2-year large lasers cause you too much heat. So, you know, it is... It's an Iron Sphere equivalent again. I mean, but it's just a cross upgrade. It's just a cross grade. I mean, this thing is just Clan Tech Orion. And a bit blockier. Um, I don't understand what's up with the artwork very much either. The, the, the Gauss rifle, I think that's what that is with the three barrels or whatever on there is attached to the hip, even though it should be in the torso. The art does not make a lot of sense in this one either, and it's really blocky. I mean, the large lasers both look different, and the the one looks like it has an SRM-6 rack around it, but it doesn't have an SRM-6. The missiles are in the torso. You can see the four points right there, and the LRMs are in the upper arm, so I, I don't even know what's going on in half this artwork. Next up is the Canis, our first assault mech. It's 80 tons. It got five, three, five, three for movement profile. The armor factor is 240, so just a little bit over the Orion we just saw. So not, not super heavy. It's just a little bit under the max, and the Orion I think was pretty much a bare on max. And uh, but let's look at this thing. It's got 16 double heat sinks. Remember that 16 double heat sinks for 32 points of dissipation. One of the first weapons I see, I see a quartet of your large lasers. Okay, you're already failing me. You're already failing me, because I can't even fire three of those without overheating. What else do I see? I see double Ultra AC-10s. Great. Why not rip out two of those zero large lasers for some, like, point, for some close-range defenses and some heat sinks? This thing is overgunned, underheated. I, I don't get this mech. I don't really, I really don't get it. This is a baseline clanner because it disappoints me in some way that it can't handle its heat. It's not really super fast, and it just kind of fights combat worthy. If it's combat worthy, you just gotta really you fire two ER larges a turn with your ultra tens until you're out of ammo. Then you fire three two three two three two. Pretty much I mean something like that. It's just it has too many guns and not enough heat dissipation. Next up, our fourth clan quad, our fourth one, the Thunder Stallion. Also, our ugliest quad by a long shot. It's another one of those mechs that I look at the artwork and I go, ah, it's a cannon designed to throw Volkswagens down range. Why? Okay, what do we look at this thing? It's an 85 tonner, it moves 350. 14 double heat sinks. 279 points of armor, which looks pretty much like it's running maximum armor across this thing. So, that's good. And what does it mount? Well, it mounts an LB-20XAC with only two tons of ammo. It's a little bit light on the ammo. It mounts four LRM-15s with a lot of ammo. It doesn't need as much ammo as it has for LRM-15s as it does it needs some ammo for the LBX. So at least one or two of those eight tons of LRM ammo should have been pulled over for LBX ammo. And I like it a lot more then. As it is, I, I can't say anything bad about the variant. The, the loadout, the loadout's fine. It's gonna... 
work under its heat, it's it's gonna be okay for that because we're looking because yeah. And um, it's just ugly. It is going to have to qualify. I mean, it's got pretty good weapons, but other than being all ammo, all ammo guns, this is going to be. One of our more amazing mechs in the book, which is really weird to say. For all ammo dependent mech, but it's still got that big bore auto cannon, which is scary as heck, just under ammoed. But it has the 415 racks, and 415 racks are a pretty solid set of guns. We come to our last Omni mech of the book, the Blood Asp from Clan um, Star Adder. This is a 90 ton assault mech that moves 4 6 with an excellent engine, has endo steel. Which is good. And it has got 14 built-in double heat sinks. It runs 256 points of armor, so it is a touch under armored. I mean, not like a huge amount. Like we're probably looking at 90% coverage, roughly. So what does the thing have for guns and the different variants? Remember, we have 28 points of dissipation for heat in the base loadouts. Or the base corp, or base body. Okay, we got two heavy medium lasers. A medium pulse laser. A gauss rifle. A Streak SRM-6, another Gauss Rifle. Okay, two Gauss Rifles is good. Two more Heavy Mediums and a Medium Pulse. Okay. This thing does have a couple extra double heat sinks in there. But even with those extra double heat sinks, those Heavy Medium lasers are costing it big time on the heat. There's just no way around it. Each of those Heavy Medium lasers generates seven points of heat when fired. So that's 28 points of heat in those lasers alone. And it mounts one, two, three additional double heat sinks. So six more points of heat. That's two Gauss Rifle shots and the Streak 6 if you're lucky and it hits. And movement. And that's all your heat. So those medium pulse lasers are extraneous. Oh no, wait, sorry. There's another double heat sink. So four double heat sinks additional. Still, it's a little bit heat inefficient, but not too terribly. And it's got a lot of close range weapons to combine with its it's Gauss Rifles, so it's kind of an odd loadout because it's really got the big sniper cannons, and then everything else is a close-in gun. At like 12 or lower hexes. So, it's an interesting way of just building that mech. I don't, I don't, I don't dislike it, I kind of like that variant. The Alt Config A has got, has got double ER PPCs, a targeting computer, and a heavy large laser. Uh, double, two heavy large lasers, sorry. The column extends over to the second page, so double heavy large lasers. Has an ECM suite. And a boat ton of double heat sinks. It has 11 additional double heat sinks, giving it a total of 25 double heat sinks or 50 points of heat dissipation, which is not enough. 30 plus 36 points of heat is 66 points of heat, and 50 can't cover that. So you have, once again have to lay off, lay off a heavy large laser almost every turn. It does have a targeting computer, which is nice in there. The ECM is the really sweet spot for it. It also has jump jets. The jump jets are just still. It's a bit hot. It's a it's it's overly hot. Alt config B swaps out the pairs up a Gauss rifle with two LRM20 racks with Artemis 4. It also slaps in some more medium pulse lasers, dropping out all the heavy mediums from the uh, the primary variant. It means this one's a better long range attack mech with the with the point blank uh, things to deal with. It also has an ECM suite as well, so that's two variants of the ECM suites. And I like ECM because ECM is a good counter to a lot of other technology out there. I like the B config because the B config really goes more towards the long range of uh, support, me long range mech, and only really kind of like handles a little bit of the close range defense with itself. All config C is um, interesting, with double ultra AC tens, an ER large laser, and an LB twenty. The interesting thing is because the LB twenty is kind of like your close range defense gun. <laughs> Problem is, it only mounts two tons of LB20 ammo again, which is fine if you're really only using that as a long range, as a as a as a close range defense gun. Uh, that you're mainly using the ER large and two Ultra AC10s as your long range fighting cannons, and it has plenty of ammo for those. It's got 40 ton or 40 uh, shots, which is enough for both those things to be firing at double fire the entire game until either you jam or you run out of ammo. So, I kind of like the Config C. It's it's interesting. All Config D is pretty good. All Config D pairs up. A gas rifle with multiple ER large lasers, some ER mediums, and then I regret what I just said because it has all two, three, 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 three Ultra AC twos. Uh, why? Why? 
That's literally 15 tons of Ultra AC2s. And a Clan Gauss Rifle weighs 12 tons. 15 points in one shot for one point of heat. Or, we have over here, between 6 and 12 damage, if you're really, really lucky, for 6 heat, slightly more range, better gun, for 3 tons less. I don't understand that at all. So actually, I'm going to reassess Alt Config D and say, why? The Blood Ass is an amazing mech. I'm going to say that. Some of the variants are really good. Some make me question my sanity. But it's a, it's a still a really good mech, and it also looks pretty cool. I mean, it's not as cool as the Nova Cat or the Hollow Toco, but it's still pretty cool looking. Although, man, man, the miniature they made, oh, that the, the metal miniature for this mech was so oversized. It was, like, stupidly huge. And now we're coming to our very last mech. We have the Highlander 2C. Yay, another 2C variant. Let's see how much this mech is just a straight transition from the industry variant. Oh, hey, a Gauss Rifle. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, oh. It doubles the SRMs and makes them streaks. That's pretty good. Oh, still only one LRM-20 rack, but it has Artemis. And it has three medium pulse lasers instead of three medium lasers. Again, just because of the benefits of being clan tech with, like, the lower weight on the Gauss Rifle and the LRM-20 and the, and the streaks being the same as a six... It's really just a side grid with a slight up improvement. It doesn't run an XL engine. It doesn't have Indo Steel. It does have ferrofibrous armor. Still, in, in, in so many ways, I have to say this just this is really, really, again, like a lot of the two C's in this book, it's just a side grade. It, it literally just just going from here from there here to Clan Tech. It's not really an improvement. It's it's the it's an IS equivalent mech in it in so many ways. So, yeah. I don't want you to call this category IS equivalent, like, you know, side grade. That's what it feels like to me. Some of the mechs in there are 2C, 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 and then things like the Corvus, which is just another Clint. So, yeah. Okay, we've come to the end of the book. And, wow, the Clanners did not make out very well in this book. Maybe because they designed, did time to create the stupid mechs called Proto Mechs. We'll talk about those in a future video, and boy, do I have things to say about them them. But that will not be happening until after we get through the vehicle videos. Still, we've got our list so far. We've got one superior mech. We've got six amazing mechs, a big wad of baseline mechs, and a lot of inner sphere equivalent mechs. Thankfully, I didn't feel anything was worse than inner sphere design, so let's be happy for that one. Still, kind of a disappointing clan list in some ways, in my opinion. This book is not the highlight for the clans in a long, in a lot, a big time, whatever. Still, you know, it's time for you to do the YouTube things. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment below. I do read them, even I don't respond to them all the time. I do read all the comments. So, this is Sleepless Runner saying, Sayonara, and we'll catch you in part three for vehicles. If not beforehand, as I release other videos. Again, Sleepless Runner saying, Sayonara. And we'll catch you next time.